Okay, we're gonna plug this in and hopefully there's no smoke. Here we go. Ah, yes! Hi guys and welcome back to the workshop. I am super excited about today's video because this is a project I've been wanting to do for a really long time. For years, I've been impulse buying old rotary telephones like this one. Whenever I see them at markets in Tbilisi, just because they've got so much potential for cool builds. But I haven't managed to figure out a project to make with them. Until now. This is the TA-68 model, made in the 1980s in the Soviet Union. It was probably the most ubiquitous phone in the USSR. Tens of millions of homes had them. Now, it's not possible to plug a phone like this into the wall jack in your home anymore. But it is possible, I think, to use two of them to make a pretty cool intercom system. An intercom system that will work out of sight line and that will ring to tell the other end to pick up. I don't know if the phones I have are in working order, and I don't know if what we're trying to do is even feasible with this particular model. But there's only one way to find out. This whole telephone mission is not just for fun. It's actually aimed at solving a very specific problem. Our family runs a small computer repair business here in Tbilisi. We've got a workshop upstairs inside our house, but we meet with clients here in the courtyard at this table. I know what some of you are thinking, that it's crazy to meet with clients outside in a courtyard for a computer repair business. But in Tbilisi, it's not really that crazy. It's actually really wonderful. I get to spend time with our clients. We talk not just about the device that needs repair, but about their tech for the whole family. It's a very holistic approach to improving their relationship with technology. But there's a problem with this setup. And the problem is right here. Whenever I need to print paperwork or get a tool that I don't have with me, I have to leave the table and go upstairs into the house. And it really breaks the flow of the client's experience. I end up doing this like 15 or 20 times a day. We simply don't have a good way to communicate between the table and our workshop upstairs. Well, we actually do have a way, but it doesn't look very professional. Khatuna, Khato. Can you bring me my multimeter? <laughs> so you can see that that doesn't really work. We need an intercom system. And if we're gonna to be totally honest, the big dream here is the phone intercom system on the table, but then a chandelier hanging down from the grapevines, because wouldn't that look amazing? I had this dream of having all my friends over for dinner with that warm chandelier light pouring down on top of us. But that's all for another video. The problem we're trying to solve today is this. And the solution is this. Okay guys, these are the schematics for the circuit that we need to build to get our phones working. I'll put a link down in the description below. The speaking and listening functionality only needs about 12 volts of direct current. This is something we could put together pretty easily with just a few batteries. But making the phones ring is the tricky part because the ringer needs alternating current. And because each of these phones only has two wires, the AC and the DC need to somehow share these. So how do we do this? We start down here with our mains power. We have 220 volts AC coming in, and we use two transformers to change the 220 volts to the voltages that we need. 50 or 60 volts for the ringer, and about 20 volts that will convert into direct current for the speaking and listening part of the circuit. In theory, you could use one transformer with two secondary windings to get these voltages, but I haven't been able to find a transformer like that in Tbilisi. So from the transformer, our 20 volt line goes into the bridge rectifier, and this changes the alternating current into direct current. Anything between 12 and 30 volts DC will probably work for this. We've also got some four microfarad capacitors over here, but the meat of the circuit are these relays. These control what kind of current gets sent to the phones. When we lift the receiver on one phone, the relay activates and sends alternating current to the other phone, making it ring. As soon as we pick up the other receiver, the alternating current stops and the direct current takes over, allowing us to talk. Now for this circuit to work, the two phones have to have similar impedance. When I measured the resistance between the two wires on the red phone, it was much higher than the green phone. The good news is that I've got a backup phone that we can use instead. This phone shows basically the same resistance as the green phone. I've got most of the parts we need for this build in my kit, except for one thing. I don't have a transformer that puts out 50 to 60 volts. 
I've got my trusty Variac that we restored in a recent video, but it's big and bulky and I need it for other projects. So this means that before we can move on, we need to take a trip to one of my very favorite places in Tbilisi, the Eliava Market, because Eliava has a little bit of everything. Okay guys, so I think I've managed to round up all the parts we need for this build. We've got our transformers, capacitors, relays. I couldn't find four microfarad capacitors, so instead I've got a whole handful of one microfarad capacitors here. I'm gonna run them in parallel, shouldn't be a problem. The plan here is that we're gonna first put together a prototype and test it. And I'm hoping by, by that time I'll have figured out what kind of enclosure we can use for this power supply. This transformer that we found at Eliava is an absolute unit, way bigger than we need, but that's what we've got to work with. So we're gonna push ahead with this. so far. This is our circuit basically. I put all the capacitors or the main capacitors here on this bottom board and everything else here on the top. Two relays, we've got the big filter cap, we've got our bridge rectifier, we've got the two diodes and these are our outputs to our phones. This is our two AC lines coming in. Probably put some insulation over the bottom here. Nice and compact. Okay, I'm gonna hook up these transformers. I've got a fuse in line here. So if there's any problem, well, with any of this stuff, it's not just gonna start melting insulation somewhere. So hopefully that will keep us out of trouble. So I started using these guys not too long ago. These are called wire crimping ferrules. Completely changed my game. Now I'm not putting stranded wire into screw terminals anymore. So here's how this works. In the past, I would have just sort of screwed these in, but with wire ferrules, you find the smallest size that works, crimp it on, make sure it doesn't come off. Look at that. All the wires stay nice and neat. No more orphan strands. Now I'm gonna shorten these a little bit before we crimp them up. And they're gonna come over here. They're gonna go right into our screw terminal. And on the other end, the other end is gonna go to our transformer. Here and here, same thing, no stranded wires. Nice and neat. Okay guys, here we go. I've got both these transformers hooked up to our circuit. Then I've got both phones hooked up to our circuit. We're gonna plug this in and hopefully there's no smoke and see what this gives us. So uh, here we go. Now in theory, if I pick up one of these phones, the other one should ring. 
That's what a working circuit would look like. Ah! Yes! Okay, now if I pick them both up, I should be able to hear myself talk. Check, 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 check. I can hear it. I can hear it. It's pretty crackly. The sound quality is pretty crackly, but it's there. It's working. Okay, now for the enclosure. Let's do this. Okay, I've got it all more or less put together here. There's something funny happening with this connector. It's something having to do with the ground and the chassis. Because when I have the connector not in, and I turn this on, machine works great. If I put this connector in, I just saw a spark, and I turn it on, nothing. Why is that? I'm gonna change out this connector. Okay, we've got a new connector on now. Let's give us a test. Nothing. Why is there nothing? Ah. Uh, all right, check this out. So, got this stray lead here that I guess I forgot to cut off. I think that might be brushing up against the case here. And is that on the side? That is on the side that we're having these problems with. So we're gonna take that out and hope that was the problem. All right, let's do another test. Nothing. Look at that, I can make them ring. Uh, what is up? Okay, so I've got a couple of other types of these connectors that we can try here. And maybe one of these at least looks plastic, and so maybe it doesn't ground to the case. It does fit. They both fit. Okay. Unfortunately, they are smaller than the hole that I drilled for this. Uh, but I think that that might be our only option at this point. Okay, so basically what I think is happening here is that because this entire connector is metal and it's essentially, it's grounded to the chassis, that means that one leg of these two connectors is touching each other when they should not be touching each other. I don't understand why that's a problem exactly, but hopefully this will sort everything out. Okay, got the new port in, feels solid. We're gonna wire it up right now. We're gonna give this another quick test and hopefully these demons are a thing of the past. All right, let's give it a shot. That feels good. Powering on, green light and Yes! Okay, yes! Let's put this thing together. Okay guys, wanted to give you a quick walk around before we button this up. So these are the connectors that we're gonna be using to uh, sort of our easy in, easy out from the telephones. We've got of course our Eliava transformer here, the big guy, providing about 53, 54 volts of AC. Got our smaller transformer providing about 24 volts that then gets rectified into DC. Here's our boards. The bottom board has all our big capacitors and the top board has everything else. So relays, diodes. I had to use some old Soviet diodes because I didn't have any, anything modern. On this side, we've got our power cord with strain relief. We've got our on off switch and we've got a fuse. I think it's a two amp fuse. Probably should be a lot less. I had to go down the rabbit hole a little bit with the grounding issue on these connectors, but we figured it out. So we're gonna button it up and do a final test. 
So there we have it, guys, a working intercom system that rings, made from two Soviet-era rotary phones from the 1980s. I am super pleased with how this came out. Yes, it's a lot bigger than I had envisioned in the beginning, but we had to adapt to the size of our transformers. And you know what? I've kind of actually grown to like the bulkiness. It sort of reminds me of that one droid from the first Star Wars movie, the one that no one remembers, but everyone had the action figure for. So let's give this system a test before we deploy it in our workshop. Let's plug our phones in. We switch on the power. Here we have. Okay. Now when they're both picked up, check, check, check. It's a little crackly, but I actually asked some friends of mine who grew up in the Soviet Union in the 1980s, and they said that that was kind of normal for these phones. The important thing for me is that it works and that this will be something that we can use in our workshop every day. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this project. This really has been a fun one for me. I learned a ton. I hope you learned something too. And we'll see you on the next video.